The rationale for this trial was to take three agents, which were each active as single agents in relapsed follicular lymphoma and had synergy as doublets, but non-overlapping toxicities, and combine them into one treatment platform. You know, relapsed follicular lymphoma is really a significant clinical problem. And for patients who have high-risk disease or relapse quickly after their initial chemotherapy, their remission durations tend to be shorter with each line of therapy. So controlling disease for long amounts of time for these patients is really an unmet medical need. I think the really striking thing about our study is that we had a very heavily pretreated patient population. So our patients had a median of three prior lines of therapy, and 50% of them had been refractory to their most recent prior therapy. Moreover than this, over 60% of our patients had high-risk disease with a FLPI score of three or greater. So in general, this triplet combination was very well tolerated with no unexpected severe or immune toxicities. What we did see is very common with lenalidomide and obinutuzumab and polituzumab to a certain extent were with myelosuppression, predominantly neutropenia. And we did see a significant amount of grade 3 neutropenia. However, this was managed easily with growth factor support as well as dose reduction if needed of lenalidomide. We saw much lower levels of anemia and thrombocytopenia. 30% of patients had a diarrhea or a rash, which are both common side effects of lenalidomide, but all of these were low grade, grades one and two, and easily managed. So this is an interim analysis, so we're really only able to report on the efficacy of valuable population, and that's because many patients are still on study and are not yet efficacy evaluable at the time of the most recent data cutoff. But for the 18 efficacy evaluable patients that we have, we are very, very excited, particularly given how heavily pretreated our patients are. The overall response rate to this therapy at the end of induction is 89%, with a CR rate that ranged from 67 to 75%, depending on which Lugano score you used. There were three patients who did not follow up for a bone marrow biopsy at the end of induction. So these patients were considered a unconfirmed CR. And so while we would consider them a CR by Lugano 14, they are considered a PR by modified Lugano. And that's why there's a little bit of variability. But our CR rate was comfortably at least 67%. Our progression-free survival is also very exciting. With a median uh, follow-up of 16.6 .6 months now, our PFS is 90%, and only two patients of 17 responding patients have progressed. Uh, the combination of R-squared, or rituxan and lenalidomide, has been recently FDA approved for relapsed follicular lymphoma based on the augmented magnify studies. I think what's interesting to note is that those patients, the patients in the Magnify study were less heavily pretreated, so they had a median of two prior lines of therapy, and many fewer were refractory to their most recent therapy. And the CR rate for the Magnify population is 34%. Now, it's a bit like comparing apples to oranges because PET was not used to evaluate CR in the Magnify study, so this is probably an underestimation of CR. Nonetheless, our CR is nearly double that of what is seen in the Magnify study. We hope, uh, by, we hope that in the near future, at a later meeting, we'll be able to present the data for the full, F, full patient population, as well as a more mature PFS data. And if these results hold up, this may really offer a new um, and exciting treatment option for high-risk and relapsed follicular lymphoma patients.